56-year-old Jeff Baxter has eight platinum albums and two Grammys, but he likes to call himself a hippie rock guitarist with top-secret clearances. <laughs> rock and roll's top guitarist, Jeff Baxter is best known for his years with Steely Dan and then the Doobie Brothers. He looked the part, lived the part, and even had a rocker nickname. Oh, some people call me Skunk. But it turns out Skunk was also interested in something other than music. If someone had told you when you were making all those hit songs, that someday you would end up a defense expert with every clearance in the world, you would have said... I would have said, you're out of your mind. It began in the mid-80s when Baxter, researching music technology, started reading about weapon systems, became a self-taught expert, and for the fun of it, wrote a five-page paper on missile defense. So one day, I don't know what happened, I sat down in my Tandy 200 and wrote this paper about how to convert the Aegis weapon system, why it would make sense to convert it to do theater missile defense because it would be on a mobile platform, give the United States a new role in NATO in the 21st century. I have no idea. I just did it. There's two kinds of ways to make music. One way is the symphony orchestra. Now, the symphony orchestra is uh, fascinating, um, but it's an organization. Now, if you look at the org chart of a symphony orchestra, it's frighteningly like an org chart of a governor organization. There's the strings, and there's the horn players, and the timpani, and, the, and, 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 and okay, folks, in a symphony orchestra, who is the only guy that really gets to interpret what you as the audience hears from the symphony orchestra? Right, you got one guy. Boy, does that all look an awful lot like a program manager? Does that look an awful lot like a senior director or an SES? Scary. And, and I'm not putting down classical music. I love classical music. But classical music is, is done off the page with a slight bit of interpretation. But again, the interpretation comes from the conductor. The second violinist and the first violinist, as good as they are, they play what's on the paper, and the conductor decides whether it's going to be romanticized, whether it's going to be slightly legato, changing some of the dynamics. But he's the only guy. But the idea of the jazz quintet is very different. You start with a theme, which is a melody and a set of chords and a tempo and a rhythm. You end up with that same theme. And in between the theme, each person in the jazz quintet steps forward to do a solo, to improvise, to take the theme and then begin to look at the theme from as many different points of view as possible. So, it, in a sense, it's an analysis of the theme. So how does that work? Well, okay, in the, you know, in, when Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker were playing, Dizzy Gillespie would stand up and he would play a solo. Now, the reason that it worked is because everybody else in the jazz quintet had tremendous amount of respect for the specialist that was soloing. They supported him in the band in terms of tempo, time and music and they also said you can have as much time as you want to solo to improvise to analyze as much as you want make as many mistakes as you want to as well explore and then at the end they repeat the theme and at the end of it they have a product in, in the intelligence community it would be a, an analytical product in jazz it would be a musical piece done uh, through the improvisation process it turned out the defense industry and Congress were impressed. Hey, Sparkster. Hey, Dana. These two conservative congressmen are Baxter's biggest fans. I want you to tell me that we're not getting BS'd about missile defense and that it's actually going to have an impact here. It's a hard thing to do. And both men say they appreciate Baxter's outsider status. Uh, Skunk uh, didn't uh, grow up in the system. He hasn't been beaten down by the system. His very uh, freedom of thought and his just a gut level understanding of technology uh, contributes greatly and people know that. Now, why do they have guys like me involved? Well, I think some of the examples that I've given you um, um, illustrate that. Does anybody know who Dan Aykroyd is? Right. You know him as a harmonica-playing 
Saturday Night Live kind of guy. Uh, did you know that Dan is an expert in counterterrorism? No, probably not. Um, most people didn't know that. We, we just opened the House of Blues in Cleveland. And um, I, was, I always play with the Blues Brothers when they open up a, a new House of Blues. And so Dan and I are backstage, and he says, Skunk, i got something I want to show you. So on the back of a napkin, he lays out this plan for Homeland Security. I said, Danny, I think this is a good plan. Uh, I'll call you in about a week. So I gave him a call in about a week. I said, Dan, you have to be at the White House at uh, 0730 uh, on Tuesday morning. I have an appointment with you for, with General John Gordon, who is, runs the Office of Homeland Security for the White House. So Dan shows up, um, um, lays out his plan to General Gordon and the people at the White House. And what Danny did was he laid out a plan for Homeland Security. And what he did is he said, let's see. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a way to combine funding from s local businesses with government funds to, to get equipment like radios and communication equipment for first responders. Uh, and interestingly enough, General Gordon says, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. He says, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a de facto standard. Because right now, firemen can't talk to police. Police can't talk to the medical. I mean, it's a really, it's kind of a screwed up deal. But what Dan was trying to do and came up with a plan for was to create a way that all of a sudden, in, a, in the space of a couple of years, everybody would have the same radio standards and communication standards simply by doing it this way. Now, does it take a harmonica playing comedian from Saturday Night Live to bring the United States up to speed on Homeland Security? Guess so, huh? The point that I'm trying to make is it, it is such a diverse world. Inside that diversity comes creativity. And from that creativity gives you the ammunition, the food, the manna, and the, and the incentive to think of new ways to do things.